Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Usman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. As we were discussing about the valvular heart diseases, among the eight, the first one is mitral stenosis, which is our topic for today. So mitral stenosis, when because as we know, the mitral wall is uh, present in the uh, left side of the heart between the left atrium and the left ventricle. So whenever the mitral valve become stenosed, or I should say it is the narrowing of the mitral valve which is present between the left atrium and left ventricle, due to which there is difficulty in completely opening of the complete opening of the mitral valve, which lead to the certain clinical symptoms. If we look at to the causes of the mitral stenosis, among the eight the most common one is rheumatic heart disease and rheumatic heart diseases the most important one or i should say the most important one for the mitral stenosis is chronic chronic rheumatic heart disease we should understand between these two concepts that in chronic the most common uh, uh, as, as we know, the mitral wall is most commonly affected in the uh, mitral heart, uh, rheumatic heart disease. But as we know, the rheumatic heart disease can be acute or chronic. So in chronic, the most common is mitral stenosis. But if we talk about the acute one, then an acute, an acute rheumatic heart disease, the mitral regurgitation is most common. So keep in mind this uh, differentiation. Another is important one is infectoendocarditis, which is also, uh, I should say, a chronic process which leads to the uh, mitral stenosis. Another is scarring or fibrosis of the mitral wall due to any reason if there is uh, a high pressure injury or any uh, inflammation, I should say, the um, um, endocarditis can lead to the mitral stenosis so any condition which can lead to the scarring or fibrosis of the wall can ultimately result in the mitral stenosis another is tumor specifically maxoma which is uh, a benign tumor and th this tumor can block uh, the mitral valve and can lead to the mitral stenosis but for exam point of view or for clinical practice you should remember these two and among these two the chronic rheumatic heart disease is the most common one if we look at to the clinical feature of the mitral stenosis as we know the mitral valve for example this is a mitral valve for example this is a right atrium and this is a, a left ventricle so if this valve is stenosed so there will be back flow because the uh, the blood cannot be pumped forward to the left ventricle so there will be accumulation in the blood in the right uh, atrium so there will be back pressure which can which will lead to the uh, congestive heart failure so there will be uh, like reduced cardiac output there will be edema and there will be uh, ascites and other features there will be the this is left atrium sorry for it is remind the correction this is left atrium not right atrium another is left atrial hypertrophy so this is this because of the back flow there will be accumulation of the blood for a long period of time so there will be dilatation of the left atrium and this dilatation can lead to the atrial fibrillation which is a lethal com com uh, complication of the mitral stenosis so this dilatation can lead to the uh, mitral uh, this dilatation can lead to the atrial fibrillation another is pulmonary edema which is simply again because of the back flow there will be jugular venous destruction again from the back flow uh, of the blood and this gvp the face will be uh, cyanose which is called mala flush another is syncope syncope or some uh, doctor pronounce it is syncope it is the temporary uh, stoppage or i should say the 
reduce blood flow to the uh, brain because of that there is unconsciousness but as we restore the blood supply the conscious level uh, regain again so these are the some clinical feature another uh, i should say the complications complications are important in the mitral stenosis again there will be a uh, heart failure which is itself a, um, i should say a uh, lethal complication of the uh, mitral stenosis another is important one is because of this dilatation there is stasis there is thrombosis so they, there will be thromboembolic phenomena in the mitral stenosis and that thrombus can detach from the uh, my, uh, from the left atrium and can go to any part of the uh, body specifically if i should mention the brain so if that emboli that thrombus or that emboli can go to the um, brain can cause stroke so important to remember this one now if we look at to the treatment this treatment i have mentioned this is just a symptomatic treatment for the um, de definitive treatment you have to go for the uh, prosthesis of wall we should uh, transplant the wall with the prosthetic valve if we look at to the treatment there is digitalis because of the high risk of the atrial fibrillation we should give the ionotropic such as digitalis anticoagulant again because of the um, risk of the thrombosis we should give the uh, anticoagulant we have that heparin specifically low molecular weight and warfarin another we should give the diuretics because of the feature of the heart failure so diuretics play a very uh, good role in the promoting the condition of the or uh, i should say the lifestyle of a patient another is antibiotic this is important point to remember because this is a, a heart disease a valve is uh, get uh, valve is already damaged so there is high chances of the infective endocarditis if there is uh, not uh, if if the cause is not infective endocarditis for example this patient is suffering from chronic uh, rheumatic heart disease and there is high risk of the uh, infective endocarditis because there is always the um, already the presence of the heart disease so any germ specifically the strepto Focus viridens is most common one. So there is high risk of the infective endocarditis. So to prevent that, we should give the antibiotic. That's it. Thank you so much.